Hello, I'm back. Thanks for clicking on my channel. This video is the RN LPN role in clinical documentation. And it's really clinical documentation improvement, but they just shorten the name and call it clinical documentation. Um, first, there are three organizations that can um, certify you in clinical documentation. Um, the first one is AAPC. They um, have a certification CDEO, which is Clinical Documentation Expert Outpatient. The next organization is um, ACDIS, which stands for Association of Clinical Documentation Integrity Specialists. Um, they only do um, clinical documentation. They have two certifications. They have a CCDS and then they have a C CCDS um, hyphen O. And the CCDS stands for Certified Clinical Documentation Specialist. And they have two certifications, which um, the CCDS is for inpatient and the CCDS hyphen O is for outpatient. And lastly, they have um, AHIMA has the CDIP, which is Clinical Documentation Improvement Practitioner. That's the certification that I have. Um, I decided to get the CDIP from uh, through AHIMA for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I qualify because I already had my CCSP because um, if you are an RN, you can qualify for the exam just by being an RN. But if you are an LPN, you don't get credit for being an LPN, so you have to have um, either a CCS, a CCSP, RHIT, or RHIA certification through AHIMA already. Um, and they're also, you also can qualify, like I'm gonna uh, have links to all three of the, the certification sites so you can read more about them. But um, for, uh, but I picked the CDIP because they don't differentiate between inpatient and outpatient. And um, in their, in AHIMA's information, they have what they call toolkits. So their toolkits, if you are a member, you can get them for free. And if you're not a member, you can buy a toolkit for um, $99. Um, the toolkits, they have one for inpatient, they have one for outpatient. So I picked the CDIP because that is an, that's an overall um, clinical documentation certification that you can use either inpatient or outpatient. And um, so getting into what clinical documentation is, to uh, you don't have to be a coder to be a, a clinical documentation uh, improvement practitioner. But it is kind of helpful um, because a clinical documentation practitioner is not a coder. Repeat, is not a coder. You have to know um, primary diagnosis. You have to know how to use the ICD-10 ICD CM code book. Um, but your job mainly is to help providers with documentation and more so. And, you know, the it's a specialized um area because it goes a step above auditing because in the truest form, auditors do not interact with um, providers because you are supposed to be an independent third party. You just report what you see and how they process the information on the back end is up to them. But that's really when um, a CDI person steps in because the person that is on your staff that is a CDI person, if they have one, that's the person that will look at the feedback, look at the report and see where there are gaps in documentation because it'll be obvious from the the codes that are either captured or uh, or are um, uh, unvalidated through the, the, the audit. So from there, the CDI person will be able to um, better um, set up uh, to be better prepared to set up training programs for the providers. They will work directly with um, some places have a, a main um, doctor that also helps with this. These are, they're called like physician, physician champions. So they would usually work with the CDI person to facilitate training for the, uh, for the other providers to bring them up to speed with the documentation. So when they have another audit, it will be, um, they'll have better results. And um, also when you are a CDIP, especially if you're working um, inpatient, it gets a little more um, 
uh, detail because when you're inpatient, you have, um, once someone is admitted, usually the CDI person will, um, will have to uh, audit or have to look at their, their case within 48 hours because, you know, you always have an admission diagnosis, even though, you know, being a nurse, your admission diagnosis changes and it does not necessarily have to match what your discharge diagnosis is because, you know, they rule out things and all that kind of stuff. But um, what the CDI person does is the CDI person is the person that will contact the attending while you're inpatient and follow your your claim uh, your or your case all the way through until it is finally coded by the inpatient coders and submitted for billing. Now, it can be um, dependent on how complex the case is, because we all know there are people who are in the hospital for, you know, weeks and sometimes months and their bills are six, sometimes seven figures. So those kinds of cases they will go over with a fine tooth comb because, of course, they want to maximize their their revenue for the resources that they put into, you know, hopefully saving that person. So the CDI person will communicate. And what I the the greatest takeaway that I learned from um, studying and preparing for my CDIP exam was um, the, the concept of a compliant query. And a query is nothing but when you ask a doctor a question about what they documented. And as nurses, we do that all the time, except that for um, clinical documentation, they actually have a process and they, there really is such a thing called a compliant query. Like you're not, a, you're, you are not allowed to specifically ask a doctor to, um, or lead a doctor into a diagnosis. You can't ask a question in a way that you would lead him, lead him or her to answer one way versus it, versus the other. You only are allowed to present clinical information and um, ask them, you know, several options and some of you know. There, it goes into detail in the um, in when you prepare for the exam, like how to ask the question. And that was my greatest takeaway because. Um, Everybody who is not trained in CDI does it wrong. Everybody asks, you know, their queries are not compliant because they are leading. And because people just don't, I mean, that is definitely from training because I didn't know. And I know I have asked, you know, when I've been audited and I've asked questions because I am usually work for um, like Medicare Part C companies and they tend to be smaller unless they're part of a larger health plan. Like, of course, like the larger health plans have Medicare uh, Advantage um, programs as well. But um, I've just worked with uh, smaller, like, you know, midsize, you know, smaller to midsize companies. And the ones, the reviews that I have done for for larger health plans, they were like nowhere near here. So there was no way to interact with any of their staff. But when I have, when I've had, you know, query doctors, it's been, you know, it wasn't compliant because I did not know. There was no no um, policy where I worked that explained it. And this is why the role of a clinical documentation improvement practitioner is so important because you learn that. And also when you are, because when you, when there's a potential for something to go wrong, you know, everything gets looked at because sometimes depending on your facility policy, I've even read, I've even done reviews where queries are part of the the medical record that was sent for review. And if you have a non-compliant query, that could also, you know, be something that you could be cited for, you know, during, you know, during an audit. So um, because not all uh, facilities include queries as part of their, like they maintain it as part of the medical record, but it's separate from like the progress notes, um, discharge summaries, um, H&P, those kinds of things. Um, so you may or may not see them. And more often than not, I don't see them, but I have seen them in reviews that I've done like during audits. So um, that's, the, you know, you want to just be as compliant as possible. You want to have everything you want to every you want everything to be above board you want your people to be um as educated as possible so they can you know document thoroughly completely and accurately so the role of the cdi person is very important and as a nurse you know clinical background like you know you and you know how to communicate with physicians that's the main thing that i i mean i cannot stress enough like most people who do not who come into coding from um, a non-healthcare background 
and they are first interacting with, with you know with doctors like they're a little hesitant to you know ask certain things and to say certain things like you have to like you have guidelines to back you up like you have you know um law I mean, you have rules and regulations that that dictate how you you know how you do your job and all you have to do is just explain it, you know, to, you know, to a doctor and not be, you know, afraid to say, well, you know, this, you know, documentation could have been better or this documentation wasn't complete because, you know, you don't have to, you know, be, you know, accusatory and, you know, demean it, you know, demean anybody because, you know, people don't know. And that's your job really is there to educate. Like most CDI people, your job first and foremost is to be an educator. And while I talked about the differences in inpatient and outpatient for the cert for the certification for the most part for a long time cdi has always been in an inpatient type of role but because of the huge um increase in auditing in the outpatient world and especially with risk adjustment with all these audits coming out and with you know cms becoming stricter because of all this overpayment you there there are so many more roles that are opening up for CDI people in the outpatient arena because outpatient was kind of like, you know, not the wild, wild west, but a whole lot more goes on in um, outpatient than typically goes on in inpatient because inpatient is such an acute you know, environment where so much can go wrong anyway. So there's a lot more checks and balances and controls in an inpatient setting versus an outpatient setting. So more things can slip through the cracks in an outpatient and basically CMS and all these other companies are and the insurance companies are trying to tighten up the 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 loose ends. So everything is, you know, smoother and more seamless. So um, getting so as far as preparation for the, the CDI um, for the clinical documentation um, exam, I also didn't. Um, want to uh, do a certification that would require you to have an inpatient versus outpatient um, certification because I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to take a whole bunch of exams. I mean, I've taken enough as it is. I can't say too many because they've served me well, but I don't want to take needless. I don't want to do an exam for inpatient and do an exam for outpatient. And what is happening in terms of employment, because there are so many um, different organizations, so many different certifications, so many different specialties. Now people are wanting you to have a, a certification for every area you, you work in. And that's another thing about CD, you know, about CDIP. You will also find jobs that will give you time. You don't have to be certified to get a clinical documentation improvement job. You can uh, there are places that will hire you, but will give you like two years, will give you three years to um, get your certification because you have to. That's the kind of thing where you have to kind of have some experience, because when I did my when I was studying for my um, certification through AHIMA, I was really disappointed because, in my opinion, like the book that they have to help you prepare for your certification was really like it, it was some BS for real, like I would not buy that book. Like that, that was a waste. The only useful part of that book was the front of the book, where they had other recommended resources, which you could have found the other recommended resources online, as opposed to paying. I think the book is like eighty dollars instead of paying eighty dollars for this book because it's clearly on the book. It says exam preparation. So if something doesn't help you prepare for an exam, then it's really like a scam, in my opinion. So I. I was a little, you know, I, I was I wasn't feeling, you know, Ahima for that that uh, clinical documentation um, exam prep book because it didn't do the job. Like you had to go out and read other resources, and you had to do other things to really prepare for the exam because the exam is nothing, nothing like their exam prep. Don't get that exam prep and think you're going to pass that test because you will not, and. Um, I just think that it's unfair and it's misleading. And you need to, if you're going to have a, a certification, you need to tell people where they can go to prepare and not recommend, you know, resources without really, you know, specifying how important this this resource is compared to that resource. That's fair to me. 
but you know, people are in the business for making uh, making money. And the thing about AHEMA is if you don't pass your exam the first time, you have to pay the full price to retest. Whereas AAPC, I don't know about um, ACDIS, but for AAPC, you get one free retake. And, you know, thank God I have five down so far. I've never had to retest. So um, I just think that for, uh, for AHEMA, do your research, like go to the website. They have uh, recommended resources. Follow the recommended resources, and I definitely recommend that you take the uh, practice exam. The practice, the practice exam for AHIMA is uh, $59 if you're not a member. And that's another thing. For AHIMA, if you're not a member, you can still take a certification exam. AAPC, you have to be a member in order to take their exam. Um, because AHIMA, there's two prices. There's a member price and there's a non-member price. So for my CDIP, I paid, um, I think it was $329. But if you're a member, I think you pay something like $260, $250, something like that. So that's, that's you know, that's, that's a savings, you know, if you're, if you're like an active member. And AAPC, I don't know offhand, but I know that all most of their exams are all the same price. And they just went up, I think, sometime last year. Now, like that, most of their exams are like $425. And, you know, that's a lot of money you know, to invest in, you know, in a certification. But once you get it, it will certainly serve you well. But as, a, you know, as a nurse, like you already, as I always say, you already have the the anatomy, you already have the, the physiology, you already have the patho pathophysiology, you already have the medical terminology, you already know, you know, you could, are, you're already comfortable reading, you know, clinical documentation. And that's really all you need. All you need to know after that is how do you, pick apart the primary diagnosis. How do you break it down? How do you, you know, identify the other subsequent, you know, secondary diagnoses? And if there are missed opportunities, how do you prepare a, a training packet or a training material to educate your, you know, your providers to help them document better? And that's really all it is to clinical documentation. Like it's no, um, it's not rocket science. I mean, it's not, I don't, didn't find it to be incredibly hard. I just think that um, the resources through AHIMA, at least, could have been a little more uh, succinct, compact, and um, better spelled out. I have not prepared for the CDEO exam, and I have not, you know, prepared. And I, and I don't know anybody who who has either the CDEO or the CCDS or the C CCDS um, hyphen O certification, but. Um, I, that's why, like I said before, I picked the CDIP because it's, it's a one and done, like they don't have two and I hope they never come out with two because if they come out with an outpatient one, I wouldn't do that. I would just go ahead and do my, my AAPC and just do the CDEO, but hopefully that day won't come. I'll be, I'll be good with my CDIP. So, um, once again, I'm going to include some links at the bottom and for all of these certifications, like I had in my other video for the medical auditing, I'm going to have a, uh, a link. Um, for Indeed, go to Indeed, put in those certifications, put in those credentials, leave the location blank and click on find jobs just to see how many jobs are coming up and to see what the what the qualifications are. You will find that um, especially for for RNs, there are way, way, way more clinical documentation jobs. Not that you only that not that you can only be an RN, but if you uh, if you are not an RN, if you're an LPN, for example, some places will say RN or LPN. But if you aren't an LP, if you are an LPN and you want to get your um, CDIP, I would recommend that you get your CCS certification. Your CCS is through AHIMA. It's uh, the uh, certified uh, certified coding specialist, but that is a combination of inpatient and outpatient. Um, even though they say it's inpatient, because it's mainly used for inpatient because you have the ICD-10 PCS piece, but you also have the the also have the CPT and of course the ICD-10 CM. So that's pretty much inpatient and outpatient covered. You can do pretty much anything with that one. I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I would have gotten my CCS versus my CCSP. But I am going to have to get my CCS. I've just been putting it off. I mean, I, I'm, I'm tired of spending money for tests, but you do what you got to do. And I kind of, uh, and also there, I'm going to um, also do another video about test taking um, strategies because these tests, as you know, just like when you take your, your boards, like they're timed and you cannot spend a lot of time um, 
you know, going back and forth over answers. Like you have to be able to eliminate questions quickly. And on all of those exams, on all of them, I promise you, once you learn how to eliminate um, two of the, because you almost always have four choices. Once you can eliminate two of the four choices, the other two, uh, qu the other two uh, choices you have, there might be one code or one situation that might rule one out versus the other. But at least at that point, you have a 50 50 chance as opposed to a 25 percent chance when you have four. So that's all part of test taking strategy. And uh, another thing for uh, I don't know what documents are required for the, uh, when you test for your CDEO or your CCDS. But I know for the CDIP, there are no coding books allowed. There's no material you can bring. So you, all, you have to have it all up here. And. I didn't find it to be um, like, I just found that you have to definitely know uh, primary diagnosis. You have to know how to pick out a primary diagnosis. You have to be able to read a scenario and know which out, what resources that were, were allocated the most in this situation. And that will pretty much give you what your primary diagnosis was. Typically, not all the time, because of course, like in coding, nothing is 100%. You have to read the scenario and pick out the best answer based on a scenario. But once you learn, once you pick up, once you can identify the principal diagnosis and once you learn querying, once you get it down, what the concepts are and what is a compliant query and also uh, so a few other a few other things, because in for, for um, all these exams, like the websites and I'm going to include the links, they'll give you a breakdown. They'll give you um, con they'll give you like a, an exam content. So you'll know like what percentage is for this, what percentage is that. And that's how you can also gauge to, to basically kind of figure out the number of questions that you'll have, because for the CDIP, it's 140 questions. And you have three hours to complete your exam. Um, I completed mine in like two and a half hours, thankfully. And I was still able, in that two and a half hours, I had flagged a couple to look at later. And I came back to them, it was like maybe two or three. And I it was able to get through and I just made the best guess. And, you know, thank God I passed on the first try. So anyway, once again, and as always, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If you, you know, feel that this is helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have more content coming out. Um, I think the next video I'm going to do, because I want to talk about um, risk adjustment and HEDIS. So I think I'm going to, my next videos are going to be about um, uh, Medi uh, Medicare risk adjustment, because it's not just Medicare, but risk adjustment and HEDIS. They're going to be separate because risk adjustment is kind of complicated and HEDIS they kind of link, uh, link it all together, but HEDIS and risk adjustment are two totally different things. But that's how I got into HEDIS through risk adjustment, because risk adjustment is not coding. Risk adjustment is basically just I mean, um, HEDIS is not um, coding. HEDIS is just um, looking through the chart and picking out clinical information and then it and entering it into uh, like some kind of software. But I'll explain it all in uh, in those videos. So. Once again, like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.